world at war forever evermore good battle is good business and ain't nothing for the poor the world at war forever evermore good battle is good business and ain't nothing for the poor the world at war Ladies and gentlemen, I believe uh, we face a sort of an image problem. Hardly a week goes by without another critique of our drug control efforts. Concern is manifested to me here in Vienna as much as when I am on missions in remote locations. Wide media reporting expresses equal apprehensions about the status quo, namely too much crime and too much drug money launder around the world. Too many people in prisons and too few in health services. Too few resources in prevention, treatment and rehabilitation. Too much eradication of drug crops and not enough eradication of poverty. As a result, we all, the United Nations and Member States, are criticized for falling short of lofty ideals of a safer, healthier, and more just world. I hear these messages and must say I have some sympathy for them. But of course they represent only part of the story. What many people do not see, and perhaps intentionally fail to recognize, are the achievements of the drug control system over the last century and the improvements of the last decade. Well, I think that was a very smart speech of Mr. Costa, uh, because I think it recognized the criticisms. And I think it's important. He clearly has heard uh, the information. He has he, uh, clearly heard the critique, uh, which I think is a good thing. I did see quite a lot of positive points in his speech. I think it was one of the best speeches I've heard him make in, in, since he has been executive director. He was quite explicit on a number of issues. Uh, he said um, uh, directly that he thought there were too many people in prison, that there was too much eradication going on without alternatives in place for the farmers. So he did acknowledge that human rights are at, uh, at risk uh, because of the uh, drug enforcement efforts. Uh, he did admit that health is at risk uh, because of the drug, uh, drug uh, enforcement efforts. So I actually find that very encouraging. What I find a lot less encouraging is the fact that uh, there is very little in terms of an actual plan on how to respond to that recognition. So, uh, for example, where are the goal? Where are the goals? How many harm reduction programs are we going to support globally? What is needed to stop an HIV epidemic globally? What is needed for countries to change their legislation to let people out of prison and stop harassing them for drug use? What is needed to put in place a thoughtful, humane, um, uh, drug services that respect human rights of drug users. My main reaction to Mr. Costa's speech is actually being encouraged by the fact that he is uh, openly giving some leadership now on there should be a real serious debate by member states, including NGOs. Uh, so he's starting to make the noises about um, uh, this is very complex issues that we've got to have a serious debate about. And that is some of the leadership that's been missing from UNODC for many years. So that's good. I think civil society's involvement in the drug control debates globally has been critically important because there are very few states that are actually bringing up some of the more difficult issues about harm reduction, the protection of public health, um, the protection of human rights. I think very few states are doing that and so it really falls to NGOs to bring those issues up. What's unfortunate is that there seems to be no real clear way of making sure that NGOs get to participate in the deliberations of the Commission on Narcotic Drugs um, in the way that NGOs participate in other sorts of UN 
processes. Uh, I think there's room for improvement on that front, and as a result, what we would see if that happened is we'd see improved policy coming out of the UN. If we do see some progress represented in what Mr. Costa has been saying, then I think civil society can take some credit for that. Um, uh, but I'm, uh, having been involved in government circles myself, civil society do not achieve this on their own. You have to work with the political realities of the member states and of the UN agencies. Um, but I do think the role of civil society has been very impactful the last few years. Um, in articulating some of the inconsistencies and the tensions in the system, but also constructively articulating uh, ways in which people like Mr. Costa can deal with those inconsistencies. Unless you take into account the views of your communities, you won't make decisions that the communities that will be sustainable for the communities. And this is not either, I should say, a comment on civil society. A lot of civil society is also quite unrepresentative doesn't necessarily reach down to the grassroots community level. And that's what we in the Red Cross are very proud of trying to do, is making sure that it's community voices that come forward. So I wouldn't say it's civil societies that they have to listen to. They must. They, yes, of course they have to. But they must listen to communities. The world at war, forever, ever more. Good battle is good business, ain't nothing for the whole. The world at war, forever, ever more. Good battle is good business, ain't nothing for the whole.